They said it couldn't be done. They said it wouldn't last. White man, black man, America F1. America F1, coming to you straight from San Francisco, California, Sherman Tillman, Michael Lawler. America F1. We would be honored if you would join us. 2023 Formula One Review Show, America F1. With your host, me. And me. And we got PJ on the phone. What's up, PJ? Yo, what's up, everybody? Did you hear him? I heard him. Did you put it up to the phone? I did put it up did to the phone. Did you put it up there again? Let me say, say hello again. Yo, what's up, everybody? All right. Here we go. So here we go. We're going to get right into it. And the reason why we're going to get right into it is because... I got to go to the studio after this, so yeah, I got to do he's stuff. He's always got something to do. I can't you know? take Sherman to lunch. He, he keeps bugging me. To take me out to lunch. I was never supposed to take him out to lunch. He was he just, just begging fakes for out, free. Fakes out all the <laughs> Be- time. You're a faker. Begging for free food. You're a faker. I would okay. build a great wall, and that? nobody oh, builds walls better than me, believe me. All right. Now, In our first item on our review show, let's talk about all the teams. We'll talk about each driver and how their season went. And that way we'll talk about everybody. And everybody's favorite driver will have something to say about. We're also going to put up a wallpaper um, of each driver at the end of the show. So your favorite driver, you can download that wallpaper. You could have it on your phone. You could have it on your computer. I'll put all those up at the end of the show. And then you can just download it off of the um, video. And then you'll have your favorite driver on your phone or you can have multiple drivers or you could switch off each day if that's what you want to do if that's what you're into starting out in last place the Haas team they scored 12 points for the year Magnussen had all of three points he scored in Saudi Arabia he scored in Singapore and he scored one point in Miami Hulkenberg, who I love. I love Hulk. I love Nico. Nico, I love him. At least it's not Yuki Sonata. Yuki! Don't talk about Yuki. And then Hulkenberg scored six points in Australia, and he scored three points in Austria. So Hulkenberg's best race of the year, obviously, was Australia. And Magnussen really didn't have a, a great year. What do you think, Mike? He had a good year. They didn't They didn't fire him. Because they had nobody else to put in the car. But yeah, but he's fine. He's fine. What do you think about uh, Magnuson this year? Magnuson is a solid Formula One driver. PJ, yeah. what do you think? Magnuson was incredibly washed this season. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say that? He just he all he didn't. Yeah, but their car sucked, so I mean it's it, if you have a shitty car, you have a shitty car. Then you, you, yeah, but just because they had a shitty car, Hulkenberg somehow found to get pace out of the car, at least in qualifying, and then he scored six points, and Magnuson never Got to ninth place. Yeah, but even when they brought... The whole year. Even when they changed the car, it didn't do anything. They still wear their rears off the car, so nothing you can do. So, All right. Who's next? Nothing you can do. That's that's what Mike says. And PJ says that he's a little wet. Is that what you said, PJ? He's washed. Wa- washed? He's washed out, right? Yeah. See? I agree with that. Well, Magnuson was never the greatest driver in the world. He was a solid B driver. The end. <laughs> Alfa Romeo in second to last place, scoring 16 points. They had the single worst car of this year besides the Haas. Zhao scored two points in Austria, two points in Spain, two points in Qatar. Botas scored four points in Bahrain, one point in Canada, one point in Italy, and four points in Qatar. Obviously, Botas had a better year than Zhao. But the one thing I would say is I think if they had a better car... 
a Valtteri would do a lot better. I think he's a good driver. No, they didn't have a good car. They, the car was a piece of junk. Yeah, but what do you think about Valtteri's driving through the years? He's always good. He's always good. You know, he keep. He, you know, if you put him in a winning car, he wins races. So, what do you think, PJ? I think Botas had the most like anonymous year of his career. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. At all on on the TV, he was just incredibly. Just, it was it wasn't like bad. It was just average, you know. Yeah, but he had a couple. Didn't he have a couple top tens? He had more than a couple co- top tens, and I, I told you which top tens he Anytime had. Anytime those scored. guys have a top ten, like in the Haas or the the Alfa Romeo, that's a W. So you should look at it. How many top tens did he have? He had one, two, three, four top tens. So he had four victories that last year. That's how you should look at it because his car was a second off the pace. Yeah, and yeah. probably probably a little bit more than a second. Maybe, but still, maybe a second and a half. Right. Yeah, when you when you have, when you have a dog of a car and you can get top tens in Formula One with the worst car, that's, mm-hmm. that's a W. So. And I think for me, Zhao's year was kind of disappointing because it doesn't look like, just in my opinion, it didn't look like he improved anymore. It seems like he's just the same as he was last year. What I mean, do you think? He's, I, I don't know. He hasn't. He's never been in a good car, so I, how, well, there's no way to gauge, you know, what he what he's been doing. I, I mean, I don't know if he's any good. And you won't be able to tell if he's any good until he has at least a, a top he, 10 yeah, worthy car. Yeah, he gets in the Ferrari somehow because the, the Alfa Romeo team is the, the Ferrari B team and so is the Haas team. Yeah, but But Hulkenberg and, uh, and Magnussen aren't in, in line for the Ferrari seat. And it no. looks like that Lando's going to be the next. He's going to take over for Sainz, supposedly. If Sainz leaves to uh, Audi. There's a good possibility he'll go to Audi, but Audi is having an issue right now because they just got a brand new chairman of the board who doesn't want to do Formula One now. What? So, yeah. <laughs> Wait, talk about that before we move on. All right. Go you ahead. haven't heard about that? No, I haven't heard about it. Let yeah, me that's it. the rumor. That's the rumor. I've read on the internet a couple places that the new chairman doesn't want to do Formula One even though they just bought a team. So, and they got, what's his name? He used to be at, at McLaren to be the CEO, not the technical. He was, he was the technical director at McLaren. And then he went there to be the boss. So, you hear anything about this, PJ? I did not hear about this. So we'll see. They could they could be the Toyota of, or the Renault of of the next. Because remember, the the new regulations come into effect in 2026. If nobody gets anywhere close to Red Bull next year, nobody is going to develop their cars for the next two years. It'll just be Red Bull winning every race. In eighth place, AlphaTauri scoring 25 points. And a pretty down year for them. DeBreeze, when he was in the car, he didn't score any points. That's uh, why he. That's why. Ricardo <laughs> scored six points in Mexico. Damn, really? Uh, it, that was his only score. And oh, then, that's right. He qualified second or yeah, third, right? Yeah, he qualified yeah. great. And then Yuki, oh, you my know how, you guy. Know, you know how he got that thing? Is he Yuki was his toe going down the, the big yes. straightaway? So yeah, yeah, that's how he got it. Yuki scored a point in Australia, a point in uh, Baku, a point in uh, Belgium. He scored five points in Austin, and he scored five points in Brazil, and four points in Abu Dhabi. Next so year, though. He scored one, two, three, four, five, in six races. And he would have scored in a couple more. But if, he's Yuki Sonoda. But he crashed out. And he's Yuki Sonoda. Sherman loves Yuki. He just likes his hair, I think. I don't know what to do with like, I like your hair. Your hair is a lot better. But I like Yuki. I just like his personality. I just seems He seems like a fun guy. He might be a fun guy. He's just not a Formula One driver. That's all. PJ, cut him down for this. Don't let him get away with this. <laughs> no, Yuki, Yuki impressed the shit out of me this year. He went from being like a definitive number two driver at that team to being the team leader and actually like scoring points and having like blowout performances. He... Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, and next year Richardo will show don't him who's the boss. Fail me again, huh? Richardo will show him who's the boss next year. We will have the same conversation next year. Well, don't you owe me a dollar? Because Yuki outclassed all of their uh, his competition. Yeah, I, you owe me. That's the third dollar I'll be collecting from you this you? year. Yeah, have will, you ever paid? Will the you dollar? take a check? No, I'm not going to take a check. <laughs> and you're going to pay up, you cheap okay, what's the news next on you? In seventh place, the Williams team was scoring 28 points. We had Albon scoring 
27 of the 28 <laughs> points. Who, his uh, his best finish was in Canada. Six. He you mean scores, Sargent scored a point? Sargent did score one point. Okay, he had that one race in the middle of the season where I thought he figured it out, and then he just went right back to being Logan Sargent. So he scored one point in Austin, Sargent did, and that was only because okay, I gotta of give it the up. disqualifications, I gotta give it up for, as for you Sergeant. remember. I like his helmet, and he's pretty. And then uh, Albon scored six points in Canada, six points in Italy. And obviously had, I think, a, to me, a breakout season where you could see oh, no, he's that. Been, he's been pretty. He's been a lot. Ever, ever since they axed him from the Red Bull, which was kind of because they did. They, they they put him in that car too soon. He, he didn't even get five or six races in the Alpha Tire. And they chucked him in the Red Bull expecting him to be Max Verstappen or, or, or Sebastian Vettel. And he just wasn't. He needed some some time to mature. They should have left him in the Alpha Tire for at least two seasons. And now look at him. He's in. He's at uh, Williams. In the last two years, he waxed his teammates. So yeah, and I also think he's he's a team leader. I, I think he's a guy that well, whoever is the fastest is always the team. Well, leader. yeah, but I'm saying he he actually he's not only is he a good. It seems like a good person, but he has a good personality. He gives good interviews. He's personable, and he's fast as hell. And, and he's from Thailand. What does that got to do with Well, I'm going to right? Thailand in 40 days. And LB- that's all you care about. That's that's your bond with L- Alex Albon. LBT. You're going to Thailand. He's, what do yeah. you think about that, PJ? Williams. Uh, Williams, I think that Albon is probably going to outgrow that team pretty soon. Oh, yeah, he's going to be in a good car in 2026. Yeah, if, he's, they give him two more seasons in the Williams. He's going to he's going to be in one of the good teams. Williams is going to struggle to be able to hold on to him because, like, kind of Aston Martin, like, want him or, like... Well, yeah, but Aston Martin has to fire uh, Lance Stroll, and they're never going to fire Lance Stroll as long as his daddy owns the team, so... They're not, they're not going to do that. They'll get rid of uh, Alonzo before they get rid of Lance Stroll. Yeah, unfortunately. It's not a big deal. In yeah. sixth place, we had the Alpine team. Scoring 120 points, Ocon's high. He had a third in Monaco. He had a fourth in Las Vegas. Gasly's best scoring was a third in the Netherlands. Zandorf. How do you pronounce that track name? I don't know. Z- how do you, Zand- Zander- I don't San- know. Zandorf. San- Zandorf. Zandorf. Oh, Zandorf. Zandorf. What, what, PJ? Zandvoort. 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 Which had the most passes of any race this year. Still a amazing. It, it looks kind of. It has that bank. It almost looks like an oval. They put that in there. That's not how the track used to be. But they just put that in there when they when they brought Formula One back. Mm-hmm. That's right but by it's the water still, too. It's, it's a hoop. I mean, I played on the video game. It's just. It's a wonky. There's a bunch of twisty, turny bits like Adrian Newey says all the time. It's just not a. We need to go back to like Singapore. That would be or Malaysia. That would be a great track to go back to. They need to do the Nordschleife and at the Nuremberg Ring. That would yeah, be they amazing. need to bring back Germany. I think. Germany. I mean, they'd kill a couple drivers every year, but it'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> there would be. They, it would be uh, well, because the last time precarious they, for they, a lot of the drivers at the Nordschleife. That's when uh, Nicky Lauda caught himself on fire and burnt half his face off. Oh man. Why'd you have to mention that? But that's what that's why they're not gonna do it. That's <laughs> <sighs> the other problem with Alpine is, is they don't have any leadership. They're horrible as a team. I mean, they're just And Renault's not putting enough money into that team to win. So and all their decision making process they've been since they've had that team. See they got it and they it became the Renault team in twenty sixteen and every year they've had people go in and out of there. They've had four or five different sets of uh, technical directors, engineers, designers come in and out of that place. And every year, oh, the next car is going to be better than right. this car. And it's right. like, that's not how it works. You have to look at Red Bull. Red Bull is the team to pay attention to. They've had the same principal, the same owner. They've had the same technical director. The end. But what, are they, what are they at now? Six championships in less than 20 years. That's that's Hall in the For mouth. a soft drink company. Yeah, for a soft drink company. And and Ferrari, who gets to make most of the rules for Formula One, hasn't won a championship since 2007. And that was a lucky win by by Raikkonen by a point. If they would have had Schumacher in the car that year, it would have been a, it would have been a just... 
they would have destroyed him. And they probably would have won 2008, too. What do you think about that, PJ? Alpine team. <laughs> they have just no idea what they're doing. They keep like this year was a disaster. They had they fired their team principal for like no reason and just like fired like half the staff. Well, yeah, they got rid of James James Allison, not James Allison, but oh god, what's his name? I just forgot his name. Otmar. No, no, Otmar was the t- the uh, the uh, principal, and God, what was the guy's name? He was the team principal. He's been he's the team. Manager, he's been there for thirty years. Yeah, thirty they, years. Yeah, they yeah. We talked guy. about it a couple times actually. And um, and they brought in, and it's like it's like it's there's a revolving door. You have to pick somebody. Like the Pittsburgh Steelers are the best franchise in the world. They pick a coach. That dude stays there for twenty years, no matter what they do, no matter what. So they always have stability. The, stability. So stability need, means something in every sport. All the no, teams. No, Alpine needs to hire Ross Braun and let him do his thing. Period. All the teams that have in any sport, pick any sport yeah. you want. It's all from when the they top. have stability. Those teams usually do well. Yeah, remember over the time. Niners in the 1980s? They had DeBartolo and Walsh. How That's it. <laughs> and they went to the championship game every year. Aston Martin, way, way the best, mm-hmm. the best uh, leap up the. Uh, field but you know why in fifth place they scored 280 points alonzo scored 206 of those yep. stroll had 74 alonzo finished second in monaco canada and the netherlands and he had numerous numerous well, third I wanna, places i don't want to be so hard on stroll this year because he broke both his wrists in a bicycling accident at the beginning of the year so he was playing hurt the whole year and he's and stroll had a fourth place in australia yeah, I think he he was Stroll was hurt, but I think the consensus is that there's quite a few other drivers that would do a lot better in that car. They're not going to put anybody else in the car. I know, it's but not going to happen. I know it's not going to happen, but I'm saying there's quite a few other drivers in that Aston Martin car this year that would have scored way more points. That's They'd true, score pretty close like, to what Alonso was scoring. But every time I hear someone talking about they need to replace Stroll, they're not replacing Stroll. It's just not. So get happen. over it. It's like I don't even know why you why you said that crap out loud. He's not going anywhere as long as his father owns Aston Martin, <laughs> and his father they invested a lot of money in that goddamn team. They did. Their new factory is like if you see the old factory, it's this little building in between these two massive like million square foot, and they're gonna tear down the old building to put a fitness center in there or something. It's just like so ridiculous. <laughs> they spent like four or five hundred million dollars. Jazzercise. Just to build, and I, I watched them build that factory, and it's just freaking massive. And they have their own wind tunnel that's going to come online. So they're, that's a team on the rise, and they're going to have Honda in the car. So Honda's coming in in 26, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. PJ, you're, chime in on uh, Aston Martin's year. Yeah, the, the, the biggest weakness in the team is Lance. Like that. I understand he's never going anywhere, but <laughs> if they would have. Like, he was nowhere compared to Alonzo or even any of the other top drivers with the top teams. Like, he could not... He should have scored at least one podium at that at the end of the year, but he didn't even do that. So, he, he, to me, he just had a terrible season. Well, it's hard, to, it's, it's, it's hard to go up against the... What are you doing over there? You gave me this water, All right, you, and uh, then I drink out of it, and it makes a weird noise. Look. Jesus Christ. Anyways... The problem with uh with you Alonso just give me water is Alonso's Damn. like one of the greatest Whoa, drivers God. ever, not like a good driver, not like an okay driver. He's a Hall of Fame. He's still got it. You see him driving the car, he's still pushing every lap of every race. He never lets up. And Stroll doesn't well, have that in him. I, yeah. He just doesn't yeah. have that in him, so yeah. Well, not he's many people. Gonna, he's always going to play second fiddle to Alonso. Not many now, people can be put, world champions, Mike. If they put Albon in that car, he might be able to bring it a little bit, but he's still not at Alonzo's. No one's at Alonzo's level. It's like Hamilton and Verstappen and maybe Leclerc. But Leclerc had, like, I, I think the worst season of his career because he was he knew he had a car that wasn't quick enough and he was just pushing too much and made too many mistakes. In fourth place, the McLaren team with 302 points, Norris scoring 205 points. Piastri or Pastrami scoring 97 points, the most ever by a rookie since Lewis Hamilton. 
Uh, he pastrami or yeah, pas- piastri. He, he had uh, his best finishes was a second in Qatar, a third in Japan, and Lando Norris was Mister Second Place. I mean, he had a second place in in the UK, Britain, Hungary, Singapore, Japan, Austin, and Brazil. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six second place finishes quite a few third place finishes and i think he had he was the bridesmaid all year i mean he, no he's he's you know? he's like he bright he was because if because last year richardo was way behind um Lando. norris because yeah. they made the car for norris we'll talk right. about that another time right but he was close to to lando you know for a rookie he's like had the he's the rookie of the year and he had the best rookie season since Hamilton. Yeah. So he has a star on the rise, but... And he did win a sprint race. Yeah, but he's in the McLaren, and the McLaren's, you know, they're a customer team to Mercedes, and they did... did they, they didn't even beat Mercedes this year, did they? they came no, in they didn't. They came in fourth. And even though the, and the Mercedes had the worst car of the top three teams, the worst car, by a long way. By a long ways. They, they, I'd probably they were, say they had the fifth best car. Yeah, they just have... Maybe... Lewis, they just have Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, they the just have team. Hamilton in there. And he drove his... I think... I'd like to say this right now. Hamilton drove the best season of his career this year because he had a dog car, and you see, you see him at the end of the races, and he was just, <sighs> yeah, yeah, he was tired. <laughs> he was putting in work, he putting so. in work. Yeah, yeah. PJ, chime in on McLaren. McLaren did what Alpine dreaming of doing. They went from being like you know fourth or fifth, like, like you know just the fourth or fifth best car every weekend to like actually being the second or even best car. At certain weekends, like they, they made a huge step up. Ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's not can I please have your attention? In the middle of the season, they decided to bring new tires to the deal, and then all of a sudden, the, the McLaren was on song. Yeah, so which was, was strange, all... you know, because I was at that race that was in Austria, and they were talking about that Pirelli had changed the compounds for that race, and that's what they were going to use going forward. And I was like, when have they ever done that? Never. Ever once have they done that? It was totally unfair, especially what happened to the Aston Martin because they brought a bunch of updates to that car that didn't work. Didn't work. And then the tires, they changed the tires on them, and it took Aston Martin like if you remember, it took them like four or five races to get yeah. their act back together. Because they were finishing, they went from finishing second, or I should say, I won't say they, I'll say Alonzo. Alonzo, <laughs> <laughs> Alonzo went from finishing second and third every, every race, race to eighth and ninth. Yep. Like, out of nowhere. Well, the other thing is the uh, Aston Martin team said they had a problem with their uh, their simulations. So they're, Oh, the computer or something? Yeah, the computer. Whatever they're, whatever, whatever they're doing didn't work. Unlike the Red Bull, every time they bring something to the table, it works for sure. Well, you but know, remember, that... the updates are only supposed to bring half a tenth or a tenth or maybe two tenths. Like, hell, I don't. When they put those new boots on... They like got like half a second, like yeah. right out of the box. Yeah. It was they like got crazy. A lot of pace out of that car. You out never of see anyone getting gains like a half second from one race to another. That just doesn't happen. It was all because of the tires. And you know, the I was I thought it was strange that not only that they changed the tire compounds going moving forward that from uh on Austria, but I also thought it was strange that there wasn't a lot of complaints from the other teams by it. What shocked me if I was a team, if I would have been Christian Horner, and it, it, it screwed the, if it would, it would have screwed the Red Bull up. Yeah. you would have heard the whiny. Oh man! Oh my god! <laughs> like you what the heck is like going on? Business. Why did they change the tires? <laughs> I mean, the tires are only like ninety percent of the performance of these cars. But like, I've let's just change been handed an tires. urgent and horrifying news story, what, what, what did you and I need all of you. To stop what you're doing, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> PJ, what do, what, you, what do you got to say about McLaren? I think he already said something about McLaren. No, I mean, what what does he have to say about the tire change? Did he did he chime in on the Pirelli change in the tire compound like more than halfway through the season? Yeah, PJ, what do you got to say about that? I don't, I don't even know about that actually. <laughs> it was like a. From, in, in race cars, the tires are like 90% of the performance of the car, and they changed the performance of the car, and it negatively hurt Aston Martin, and it positively helped 
McLaren by like half a second, which never happens. So never, never, never. It was never. just nuts. The Ferrari team finishing in third place, and it came down to the last race of the season between Ferrari and Mercedes. Ferrari scored 406 points. Carlos Smooth Operator Science had 200 of those points. And Charles Leclerc finished the season really strong to have 206 points. I would say Carlos Sainz, he had the only non-Red Bull win of the season, winning in Singapore. He was third in uh, Austria and Italy, and Leclerc was second in Austria, Vegas, and Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Uh, Sherman is college educated. This is what you get for you get you pay for in America uh, 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 nowadays. He can't uh, even pronu- pronunciate Abu, Abu Dhabi. Uh, Abu Dhabi. The Yas Marina Circuit. Yas Marina. Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. See, I did it. Pizza for one. <laughs> Carlos Sainz was leading Leclerc by quite a bit because Leclerc had quite a few DNFs this year. I think he deserved to finish ahead of Leclerc, but Leclerc. Just at the end of the season, man. I mean, that Vegas race, I was there. Leclerc was amazing. Really? I mean, he's the only guy this year out of all the people to pass Max Verstappen on track. I think somebody said that, and I yeah, checked it. Who, who That's the, not true because who won Lewis Hamilton. Wait, but Lewis Hamilton did pass um, Max Verstappen at Austin. Verstappen. Shut up. No, shut up when I'm talking. You shut up when I'm talking. Gentlemen, you can't can I please shut up. Up. every word. I mean, like, be quiet. Be handed and urgent. For stabbing. Yeah, yeah. Now, even Michael Jackson told you to. He came yeah. back from the grave and told you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Tell him to beat it. <laughs> that's right. Um. Anyhow, I, Leclerc passed up Max Verstappen. And then did Ferrari screw up the pit stop? You know what? <laughs> Ferrari let's screwed up let's, the pit let's stop, concentrate on Ferrari finishing three points behind Mercedes. I think Ferrari had a better car overall. Okay, okay, I'm going to make a prediction. Wait, overall, don't you think Ferrari had a better car than Mercedes this year? They My both f- sucked. What are you talking about? But, nobody, nobody had anything for for the Red Bull. It was like not even close. But I'm talking about for their head to head competition. For no head to head competition. Nobody races for second place. Uh, they, do they get extra money for second place or not? Yeah. Do they get a trophy that Lewis Hamilton left on the table? He doesn't care about second place. Well, he got third. Place. He got his third place trophy, and, it, and the controversy is he left it on the table, and a fan picked. He a fan said, "Oh, can I take this?" And Lewis Hamilton said, "Yes, hell yeah!" And then the fan had it at his house, but come to find out, Mercedes said, "Oh, well, he left it on the table because usually we leave it on the table, and the FIA gives it to the team, so he doesn't get to take it home." I think that's a t- a spin. I think that's spin. I think that's. A witch doctor back in the scene saying, oh, you guys screwed this up. Let me come in and fix it. Lewis Hamilton didn't want to take a third place trophy home. And he was leaving it for that fan. And they had to clean that up because the fan showed it on his Instagram and (laughs) and his Twitter or X account. And then everybody got in a hot, roaring mess about it. No, the team team didn't give a fuck about the third place trophy. They just said that crap on TV just so... Oh yeah, we, we we're happy to come in third place. Get the fuck out of here! No one wants that fucking trophy. It's like getting a, <laughs> it's like getting one of those. What are they? What, what are those awards you get for coming in last? A participation. A participation trophy. medal. I got one of those in grammar school, and I threw it in the garbage. And my dad's second wife lost her ever loving mind that I threw away my my come. What was it called again? Participation. Participation trophy. medal. I'm like, if you don't come in first, second, or third. It's like you don't get a, a trophy. So I had a decent surfing or bodyboarding career. Uh, oh, what? I, you know, I, I used to bodyboard, right? You knew I that. know you used to surf, but yeah. I don't know you bodyboarded. Yeah, that was, you know, yeah, boogie boarding or whatever. What, what, do you mean, what do you mean career? <sighs> so I finished in, I think it was 1990. I finished fifth in California, and I went to the bodyboard world championships with the pipeline. In Hawaii? In Hawaii. Yes, that's in Hawaii. Correct. And... I had, you know, some first place trophies. I had some second place trophies. I had some third place trophies. But my thing, I don't know my my 
<laughs> my 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 level in life was always finishing fifth and fourth for whatever reason. <laughs> so I had numerous, and I do and mean fourth. numerous, fifth and fourth place trophies. And well, then it, it, I was it, looking at them. So I had my first and second place trophies and third place trophies upstairs. And then I was looking at all my fourth and fifth place trophies in the basement. And I said to myself, there's no such thing as having a trophy for fourth and fifth place. And I threw them all in the trash can. Really? Yes. Okay, but they still gave you trophies. Then. They did. For you get you get That's trophies not... from first to sixth place. Oh, okay. And so I had a, a whole bunch of fourth and fifth place trophies, and I I threw them all away. Well, when I when I started driving, they gave you trophies all the way up to fifth. Uh huh. And I never got one up to fifth, and then the next year they changed it to so only three. <laughs> oh, only three. <laughs> and I couldn't get. I kept coming in fourth and fifth, and then. Then all of a sudden, I just popped off a win one day, and then that was over. So I got my PJ, trophy. you're from the uh, participation trophy generation. <laughs> <laughs> what, chime in on these uh, participation trophies and Lewis Hamilton leaving his third-place trophy on the table for a fan. <laughs> I would say like a participation trophy is okay for like being fourth or fifth, but anything below that, I'll get it, right? You shouldn't get a trophy for anything but first, second, or third. Gold, I think so. Gold, first, second, or third. Gold, silver, fucking bronze, that's it. And anything after that is like just, no. Well, the reason why they gave out fourth and fifth place trophies back then is because the finals was the top six. Oh, okay. So out of all the heats, you make you go through your heats, and then the top so six will go to the finals. In, you were in, so I made it to the finals. You made it to the finals. That's fine. Like, then fine. You should get that many trophies. But yeah. The, I mean, these guys don't want... A second or third place trophy? Are you out of your mind? Could you imagine the like someone sitting there being proud of coming in third in Formula One? Unless you were like uh, the Haas team, and they came in third, which they did a few years ago, or fourth yeah. or something. Yeah, fourth. Now yeah. that's that's a different case. But the Mercedes team coming in? No. Chime in, uh, PJ, on Ferrari's year finishing in third. Uh, I think they should have finished in second, but they uh, decided to be stupid and be themselves on. How many pit stops did they screw up? Well, the, the, the thing was, was they, they screwed up Sainz's strategy big time. On, uh, oh, that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> <clears throat> well, they screw up the strategy so many times. Yeah, for but they so always many, do that so now. Many I have races. no idea so, how I mean, they we keep doing it. Kind of lost count how many times we talked well, about it on the show through the year. they've been doing it for like since 2008 to now. Finishing in second place to Mercedes. AMG team scoring 409 points. Lewis Hamilton scoring 200. Oh, did Lewis get third place in the championship? He did. Oh, 234 okay, points. No. Russell scored 175 points. Russell made the podium twice. Spain and Abu Dhabi, he finished Abu third. Abu Dhabi, please. He finished third. God. And then Lewis Hamilton finished second in Mexico, Spain, Australia. And a disqualification second in Austin, which... Uh, we'll get what to happened? later. We'll get to later with the ride height. Remember? Oh, yeah, we'll no, talk no, about no, that no. later. I don't want to talk about height. that. Later. It was the they they scraped the bot. The, uh, yeah, the ride height. No, they scraped the the wooden floor they have on the thing. Which is the ride height? Because no, if the height was higher, then they wouldn't scrape the floor. Nothing to do with the ride height. It does they, have something to do with the ride height. They went over a curb and put a mark no, in it. That's no, what that no, <laughs> okay. no. You don't understand what No, that you is. don't understand. You have no idea what the plank is. You don't you know, I you know what the plank you know is. Why, you don't know what the plank you know is, and you're gonna put, walk the plank you know, if you keep going <laughs> down this road. Do you know why they put that stupid plank in? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. PJ saved this man. <laughs> PJ, do you know what the plank was put in for? I just know that <laughs> Thank you very much. And they've only done that twice. Twice. That was the second time. The first one was Schumacher in right. Spa in 94 when he spun out coming out of Puhan. And he did the best 360 spin and kept going and still won the race. And they took it because there was a scratch on the, the freaking plane. The dumbest, the dumbest decision ever to put those planks at the bottom of the car. But they did it on purpose so you wouldn't bring the ride height to a certain, to a certain point. But if you go over the curbs and you scrape that, because that's what Lewis did. PJ, did you just notice that he talked about ride height and I was talking about ride height and he was saying I was but wrong for talking about ride height? Context. Did you know? Did you just notice that, PJ? Yes or no? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Finishing in first place, the Bull, the team with the super max 
Lance Verstappen scored 860 points. Verstappen scored 575 Verstappen. points, meaning that he would have beat every team by himself. Checo yeah, he would have got the Constructors' Championship too, right? Yeah. Constructor and the Individual well, Championship all by himself. if anyone remembers the first show of the 2023 America F1 season, we congratulated the Red Bull team on winning the 2023 we World Championship. We were right. We were right. No, I was we, right. I, I said what, it from the What do you mean beginning. you were right? We. There's you. There's me. There's we. God, we was were the worst, right. The worst ass whooping in the history of ass whoopings was this year. I thought the 2004 ass whooping Ferrari put on everyone, but it was nothing like this year. Nothing like it. Watching Max at at Spa this year, he was like five feet away from his apex at every corner. He was just putt-putting around. You know he had the engine turned all the way down to zero, basically. And he still was like 20 seconds ahead of everyone at the end of the race. I was just in shock, like... I don't even know if I watched that whole race from beginning. I had it on, but I don't even think I watched every lap because it was like, why? It was like, unless he blows up or a brick falls from outer space, he just he just won the race. It was like, oh, it's just ridiculous. Carlos. And, and next year, the, Fer- the Ferrari, the the uh, Alpha Tower, basically every car is going to look like this year's Red Bull next year. And then the Red Bull will look different next year, and no one will be able to keep up with it. But everyone knows what their floor is now because of Monaco. Let's not forget about that. Sergio Perez scored 285 points. He had wins in Saudi Arabia and Baku and couldn't get another win throughout the year. Who won won Monaco? Uh, Monaco was run, obviously, by... Max for Verstappen, stupid, yeah, Are you sure? yeah, I'm positive. I thought I thought Perez won. No, Perez no, won last he, year. He won. He won that the year before. Right. So he only won in Saudi and, and Baku this year. So he won two races. Verstappen won 19 freaking races in one year. Yeah, complete domination. Like I said, it's like I okay. I, I'm going to make a statement about the Red Bull. Is it the R19 or the R18, whatever they call it? Best car ever. If Nikita Mazespin was in that car. He would have won the championship. No. No. <laughs> no. Yes, no. Yes, he wouldn't he have. He would totally He would have found a way to crash. <laughs> he would have found a way. It's... He would have found a way to crash. He has to be one of the top five worst drivers ever in F1. Oh, no, no. He's got nothing compared to the dude in the early I said 90s. top five. I didn't say he's the worst. No, no. The one guy in the, in the 90s came into the pits and said he was too tired to keep going. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a true story. I mean, he's too tired to keep going. He couldn't do, you have no idea how hard it is on you in a race car. Even in a cart, it's insane. Um, but yeah, he came into the pits. He's like, I'm sorry. I can't, sorry. Can't go anymore. Can't do it anymore. I'm done. And I'm he done. never raced in Formula One again. You heard about that, PJ? I did not know. Oh, and that happened to Sergeant this year. Uh, yeah, did well. That that, that was a bunch of people. That what was that Bahrain? No, that was Qatar. That was Qatar, where Sergeant had trouble. Getting, Everybody had trouble. It was freaking hot. And I think humid. the only two people who didn't have no, he got sick. He had to go to the hospital. No, he did. So yeah. did Lance Stroll. But I think the only one who who got out of the car and was like, "Yeah, this is racing." It was Fernando Alonso. Probably, yeah. Like everybody else was getting out of the car, like you know, barely making it. People had to help them out of their car. I'm gonna make some a- people fainted, some people threw up. Who said they threw up in their uh, their uh, visor? Oh, Gasly. Gasly said he, yeah, he said he like threw that. up in his visor. And if Michael Schumacher was in that race, he would have got out of the car. There would have been no sweat on. Fernando him gets out of the car and he's like, he's yeah. from that generation. Yeah, he's like, like, yeah. And then Lewis Hamilton says, "Hey, this is what they pay us for. Yeah, if no. you, if you have problems with this, then maybe you need to train harder." Wow! Wow! Yeah, no. Like, whoa! No, I, 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 I can't. Stress this enough, what humidity is like. It is the worst ever thing you will ever go, unless you're used to it. And there's no only way to get used to it is to live in it. And you yeah. still aren't going to be used to it. PJ, what do you got to say about the phenomenal Red Bull season? The R19. Well, they traded those. <laughs> what did he say? He said the boringest season of all time. I would, I would agree with that. Absolutely. If you go back and watch the 2004 season, it's the same season. But uh, Schumacher was 30 seconds ahead of everyone that year. Let's move on. We've reviewed every team. We've reviewed every driver on the grid. Let's talk about 
What was your most disappointing thing of the whole year? Was it the Austin DQ of Leclerc and Lewis Hamilton? Was it DeVries just getting, you know, let go? Or was it Perez crashing in the first turn? Oh, that was in Mexico. In Mexico, his home race. What Um, was your most disappointing part of the season? None of the above. The Red Bull R19 was my most disappointing point of the season. It's just ridiculous that... They had a car that was like probably two seconds a lap faster than everybody. They never were. They never raced one lap in an entire season. They won all the fucking races except for one. Boring. PJ, chime in. What's your most disappointing part of the whole 2023 Formula One season? Uh, Max <laughs> Go ahead, expand on it. There's nothing going on. Okay, this is remember I've told you this multiple times about Formula One. They should all have the same engine, the same gearbox, the same steering wheel, no wings on the car, thin the tires out a little bit, super, super soft tires, and let them design the car. But still, at the end of the day, it's still going to be Red Bull, Ferrari, and Mercedes having that because they have the best drivers. But they're not going to do that. So. For me, the most disappointing part of the season was Austin. And the reason why I say that is because you had two Formula One drivers getting disqualified. Both of them made the podium. One made second. The other one made third. And then after the race, you told them that their car was too low. So that means your car was illegal. So all those people who came out to that race and cheered on their heroes and were ecstatic for them finishing and placing had to live with the disappointment. And I yeah, thought... The, the rules suck, Sherman. I think it's about... And I think what Formula One is forgetting, it's about the fans. It's about the spectacle. And they need to get rid of track limits. Let's put that on the All table. these freaking rules need to go, man. There's just too many rules. They need... Uh, too many. They need Robert Pemberton, who used to be the director of uh, racing for NASCAR, to, cut, to go to Formula One and come out and give that speech he gave out about 10 years ago. Have at it, boys. Have at it, boys. <laughs> I mean, have at it. That was the greatest speech ever. You know? When I saw that, I was like, no way. Did, like these did, did he just men say race. that? <laughs> okay, what else we got to talk about? The highlight of the year. Was it Oscar Piatri? Was it Carlos Sainz winning in Singapore? Or was it just the domination of Max Verstappen? Red Bull. PJ? Carlos's win at Singapore. That, <laughs> that was a lucky win, though. I mean, you know, but you pulled it off like you drove massively the entire time. Yeah, but the Red Bull that day was like, it, that car didn't work at that track for some reason. If, if you see that. Well, that, well the car, the car well, I don't think their setup was right, and the, the car was sliding in the center of the corner, and they couldn't, they couldn't do anything, but... To me, that was the high, I'm going to agree with PJ. Carlos Sainz winning in Singapore was the highlight of the year overall. And the reason why I thought it was, was those last couple races. I mean, those last couple laps where Russell looks like, I mean, because Mercedes got the setup right for Singapore. They should have, they had extra mediums. They should have won that race. But George Russell wouldn't let Hamilton buy like he should have. Hamilton would have caught up and probably passed both uh, Carlos Sainz and probably would have won that race. He's still mad about one point not getting getting out of the way. He's not the number two driver on that team. He should have moved. He wasn't faster than Lewis, and he was holding him up. Did you ever hear the team get on the radio and go, uh, Lewis is faster than you, move the F over? Well, they should have. But they didn't. But Because they're cowards. (laughs) They're cowards, damn it. That's why. Okay, if Lewis was going for the championship this year, they would have moved him for sure. Okay, what's what's the last on the agenda? I think that's it. The driver of the year obviously goes to Max Verstappen. No, my. But driver- if you had to pick somebody else okay. other than Max Verstappen, who's your driver of the year, Mike? Well, his name's Max Verstappen, but I would pick <sighs> Logan Sargent. All right, all right. <laughs> that's enough. Don't, don't, come on. Don't, let's not play with the fans here. Okay, Logan Sargent, I would give it about a 90% chance he's not going to be in the car. 
next year, and Liam Lawson will be in the car. He's the Red Bull. But they've driver. already confirmed him for 2024. Yeah, they confirmed anything. Yes, they have. Are you sure? Yes, I'm 100% sure. All right, well, whatever. Then we can watch him flounder at the back again for another season. Because PJ, give me your driver of the year other than Max Verstappen. It's got to be either Fernando Alonso or Carlos Sainz. No, it's probably Fernando. Carlos drove a good season, but Fernando's... Remember, Fernando's like 15 years older than most of these guys. Yeah, he's 41. He's almost 20 years older than uh, Max. And if they put Fernando in the car, there was a rumor going around for a week that... Oh, Fernando we love that rumor. That was, a great that was the best. But it would it would it would have started like a war within Red Bull. And Red Bull know better than <laughs> they would never do something like that. Well, what what do we gotta watch for, you think, in 2024 as we okay. conclude our 2023 Formula One review show? This is what has to happen for Formula One to be good next year. The Mercedes team has to develop they have to have a car this year, not like the last two years where they de- developed some crazy concept that didn't work yeah, and come out with yeah. a, a Red Bull copycat car it's gonna look a lot like the red bull i don't think they're gonna come up with their own thing and if it doesn't work nobody's gonna develop their car until 2026 it'll be two more years of this what do you gotta say pj what do we gotta watch for in 2024 season absolutely martin and mclaren those teams are just off and like that after this season like they just want Determined to be Red Bull, and they're going to need to be developing this entire offseason to do that. But like Mike was saying, Red Bull's probably going to win the next two seasons. So, and if they do, I'm going to be a little disappointed because I, oh, you I, should just already be disappointed. Unless, I like I said, unless Mercedes comes up because they still have a great team, they just didn't have a good car, and the car they had this year was 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 a dump truck. I mean. Lewis, <laughs> that time Lewis was on the radio complaining over, and, and Wolf came on the radio and said, Lewis, I know the car is bad. Please stop complaining and just, just drive. drive the car. <laughs> just like, drive the I car. Like, I was stunned. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, they're, they're fucked. Hopefully, Perez can have a better season next year. He had a great season. They won the championship. Well, yeah, but he had, the, he had that funk of. Yeah, he had that funk about five or six races where he was just totally out of it, man. man I, I don't put He would hard. crash or he'd finish. Yeah, like he did. Oh, that's right. He's, he's the reason tenth. why everyone knows why the floor on the Red Bull looks like the floor. Exactly. And everyone knows now uh, what the Red Bulls do because underneath the car is the most important part, not the top of the car. I, I, I think Perez had a disappointing year to his standards with that type of car. Well, the car think- that is a second faster than everybody else. He should have done a lot better. Uh, he's, he's, Don't he's, you think, PJ? Yeah, Perez, to me, had like one of the worst seasons. Oh, the worst, like, yeah, one of the worst seasons. He was like out Q3. I mean, yeah, Q2, Q3, Q2, Q1. Way so many times. Yeah, but a couple of times it was Red Bull's fault. They were doing some goofy strategy. Yeah, but then Max still won the race. So what are you talking but about? But Max is better than than than. Well, Perez. I know that Perez he's is better. Is yeah. The number two driver on Red Bull. That's all they wanted out of him is to do exactly what he's done the last three years: win, stay out of Max's way, try to come in second, score as many points, win the constructors' champ. That's his only job. He's not even supposed to win races. Well, he can win a couple. Right? He can well, he win more win than two. He did win a couple races this year. He he should have won. In my estimation, at least five races this year. Well, whatever. It's, 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 that's, that's apples and oranges. They won the championship. They confirmed it for 2024, even with all the 50,000 rumors that everybody was going to be in that car next year. And guess what? They'll win the championship next year. And guess who will be in the car in 2025? Perez. Sergio Perez. Yeah. <laughs> Unless he retires. That's the only way he's not going in the car. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen, for... 2023 that's our last show of the year and we want to thank everyone for joining commenting liking send us money (laughs) subscribing to our channel and to listen to us over on spotify apple music amazon uh we're on amazon yeah we're on amazon pretty much is that amazon prime anywhere there's a podcast Oh, we're there? Delivery system, we're there. Where are we the most popular at? Uh, TikTok. TikTok. Yeah. Oh, you put those little shorts on We put on the there? tick. We put... So we're starting to get... 
or not, I, I won't say we, you are starting to get traction on our Instagram. We just started an Instagram. Well, remember, and your job is to be loved. My job is to be hated. Yeah. And people love well, you. You're, you're quite popular on our Instagram. <laughs> um, so we just started that up. So we're on Instagram, X, YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Music. So please listen to our show. Tell your friends. We're just a little underground channel trying to keep flying our wings. Well, if you can get his wife to give us the, the room. And next year, we're going to have a brand new studio in my house. Hopefully, if my wife ever gets all that stuff out we'll of there. See, it's probably not going to happen. It yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. No, it's going to happen for 2024. <laughs> happen and then we'll have a nice studio, a different format as far as the look over? of the you show. Want me to come over and help you proactive? Once, dude, once Is that she gets... Help, it has to be after the holidays, and then after so my when, stairs. When, when, I gotta, I gotta replace my stairs in the front. My stairs. Oh, Sixteen thousand dollars. You got that kind of money? I gotta work. They need some. They need some bus people and some dishwashers at the palace. We want to thank PJ Feminia for joining us for our review show. Because uh, Mike didn't know the Wi-Fi password, he couldn't be through and have a great well, I, I sounding found, I, I voice. Found, now I, his voice going to come out all crackly. David, but. the drummer here, he told me that the, the password doesn't, the uh, Wi-Fi doesn't work. So the Wi-Fi doesn't work, so. and that's even more reason why we're going to be moving to my house, so we can <laughs> be more comfortable. And uh, maybe you the can Wi-Fi will actually this, work. You can figure out how Wi-Fi works and all this, how how this works. On that note. Thanks, PJ. Thanks for showing up. And uh, we'll see you guys next year on America F1. F1. And horrifying news story. Thanks, PJ. I need all of you to stop what you're doing. We'll talk to you. We're going to do a... Uh...